Welcome to Just Trucking. On this episode, we're going to replace an air compressor and an ISX 15 and a 2013 Volvo. And we're also going to do a coolant reservoir. So if you need some of that done, here's a step by step on how to do it, along with a little bit of family life on the way. God bless. Enjoy the video. up today it's uh actually sunday morning early it's daylight savings time and uh this is the day the night of uh halloween so i got home uh halloween night got a little bit of rest about two hours and then uh went to pick this up because it delivers at amazon right by my house on uh monday morning 6 30 so Figured why not? Nine hundred dollars combo is trying to get six fifty for it. And I just threw out, hey, I'll go get that for nine hundred. Go back to the house tomorrow and then deliver it Monday morning. So a ah, little bit of rain, fifty-seven degrees. But imagine a stay left. I'm not sure what to do. No, I'll stay right. I think I don't. I didn't know. I thought they made these candy bars. A little bit of everything, huh? I guess. I guess. <laughs> it says it says pet food as a description, so I thought it was just maybe that. Well, it's dog and cat food. Dog and cat food. All right. Go around the curve. Go around the corner of the boat. Go to door 26. Okay. Think 26 on the left side. If not, go around the other side. Alright. So pop the, pop the doors. Do you slide the tandems? Okay, go ahead. Go to door 26. Leave your doors closed. Unhook it back all the way up with your doors closed. And look from your trailer. Pull up about three or four feet. Wait for the green light. If you see the green light, that means you're loose. You can hit back up, come back around here, you can scale there, then you get the paperwork. Okay, so you slide your hand and you can get back there. So no contact anybody back there, just all you. Yep. Alright, cool. I'll see you a little bit. Thanks, man. Place is a Mars Corporation, so they give you free MMs. Awesome. Alright, uh, let's back in this uh trailer. Door 26. Right back there. Loaded pretty quick last night. Crazy how uh, they keep your doors like that. Only if this is the fourth place I've been to that you don't open your doors. They open them from the inside. So you pull to the dock and just let them open them. So then they sealed it up for me. And I think we have pet food back there. I think we have cat food or dog food. Not sure. But uh, came over here to this South Carolina um, rest area and slept for another five hours, six hours. So now let's get home. See if I got time to do this. Uh, Compressor and coolant reservoir because it is Sunday and I need to get that done. But the engine is going to be warm now, so I don't know. We'll see. That's a nice looking. Uh, what is that? A Peter W9. Right now, I have to go work on a truck right now. I came home to see you and get the parts. What are you building? Uh, have a, a tower. A tower. Wet bangles. All right. Well, I love you. Do you have a good Halloween? Yeah. All right. Let's go get these. Hand pooter. Hand pooter. Let's go get these parts out of the garage. Hey, dude. Cash. Hi, dude. I love you. Did you have a good Halloween? Yes. How much candy did you get? So much. So much. All right. I'm going to go work on a big truck, okay? I got two piles. Two piles? Awesome. Have, have fun at your birthday today, okay? Yeah. Oh, really? 
Well, also, I love you. Bye. All right. <sighs> so, um, that one cover, this is a compressor. Sorry, guys. I, I do family life with this channel if you're new to the channel. And uh, that's the whole reason I'm breathing and kicking and working as hard as I can to provide for them. Uh, this here is Old Red. Old Red has some plans uh, coming into works. Old Red, that's not rust. That's dirt from the pallet that I threw away earlier. But we're going to go get a brand new five gallon. These are our five gallons that we empty from when we do oil changes for the semi. Today we are doing the coolant reservoir because we're getting a little bit of leakage. Where's it at? This side. Right here. And a lot of people have commented that compressor could be uh, giving extra uh, pressure to the overflow. So makes sense because the compressor was re wasn't replaced when we did the um, in frame in the truck in January, February this year late january early february it was a six-day process out there in uh, griffin georgia so it did have some coolant and bad oil and stuff going through the head and all that kind of stuff and we also found i'll show you guys when we do this uh removal and install what could have been a huge problem of why i've been going through this is my third compressor now uh in two and a half two years two months so let's talk about all that but this is old red guys i got some big plans for her i want to introduce you to her if you haven't already seen her we have an older video when we bought her and uh this will be our next part of just truck and promotional and uh yeah okay let's go get this stuff installed it's turned in to be a beautiful day and we're loaded right now delivering an amazon tomorrow at uh 6 30 in the morning so let's pray we can get the truck to keep running i'm gonna go grab something to drink happy halloween well normally he turns on So here we are, a new, brand new five gallon. I'm gonna use this to direct the coolant coming out of the bottom right. This is where I'm gonna detach the uh, hose and let the coolant come out of it. And then I have this, and when I put the, the coolant we drained back in, should siphon in case there's any kind of dirt or particles around. Here's our new compressor. This is probably why you're here if you're watching this video replacing air compressor in an ISX. This is a remanufactured one, about $794 out the door. And here is our other one. All right, so yeah, it's pretty, it's not too bad. There's a couple breather tubes. Um, the biggest thing you're gonna run into out of tools is this right here is pretty big. You need a big uh, crescent wrench to get that off. And then um, this line right here is what I'll talk about this. I didn't see when I first replaced this behind the intake that when I put it on, it was kinked. And that could have been why my older compressor went out on me. So I'll put the fitting back in this is to your governor to shut it off. It's pretty easy. This, I might take this out. Last time I didn't, but when I was redoing my in frame and I replaced this line, it was so much easier with this out um, breather. And the reason we're here today is right here. As you can see, you're starting to a little bit too much pressure in the reservoir so we're going to replace the reservoir also because it's yellowed we can't see our line but we think this is our problem for why we uh, are getting more pressure so let's start doing that yeah air compressor removal we'll do it step by step and get this bad boy in it's not too bad one bolt here one bolt here and then two at the very bottom to hold it and then once you get it in you can take off these with an impact or um they're pretty, they're pretty dang tight is why I say that. And this is where the power steering goes on. So and these are your two cool and inlet, inlets. All right, let's get it going. First, take off this uh, breather to your intake and uh, goes to the back to the compressor. You're gonna need that free. And then I'm gonna start working on the coolant lines one at a time. And then we'll start to get the um, power steering off and then the bottom bolts. Once you get the power steering off, you can reach them better below it down there. Yeah, a little bit of leakage and this leakage is actually coming off of the compressor right here so we're definitely got some problems in there all right so it's definitely wet from the uh, compressor and uh this is your next thing get this off and also loosen this before you take out the compressor so it has um leverage on it if you take that out it's gonna be hard to get that out if it's stuck so loosen that up before you unbolt the whole compressor and we'll move on to these uh cool lines up here get them loose and they'll they'll free span on you go back and forth a bit to get them loose so that they, these don't keep kinking up. So you'll get that. Or you can just take off from here too, also. So I think that's what I'll do. Just make sure this is spinning freely so that you don't kink this line again. All right, sorry for that. Yeah, first take off this, then we'll take off that. 
And then we'll move on to uh, taking off the governor. This is just a press in, take a screwdriver or a flathead. And uh, I'm a small crescent wrench, not a small crescent wrench, so I'm gonna think about a small open end. You push it on there and it'll, it'll release it down. So we'll get that going, get everything free first and then see if we are gonna take out this or we'll, we've done this twice without doing it, so we'll probably not do it. And then you got one bolt nut on the back and the other one's from the front of the cover by where you uh, would crank the head. So now I'm gonna start working on this reservoir to get that drain in while we're doing the compressor still. And after looking at it, our main line coming off the bottom of it right here, comes down here and goes down into the, what is that, the, uh, the filter that goes to the coolant, so. Just take this line off and then you can direct this line straight to a five gallon bucket. So we don't even need that funnel. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna use this line to drain. And uh, there's four bolts that go right here. This one right here, I use my impact for these bottom three because you can reach it. But the last one, I just use this uh, smaller socket to get in there because you wanna get underneath here. So uh, just use a regular short socket on that one. And then we'll get this drain in now. And we're all free up top, so it's ready to come out already. Now we got to release these lines over on the other side. I'll show you these lines. You have to release this little clip. It simply pops out. So get those out, and then these will just pop out now, but I'm not going to pull them until we get that coolant out. And then this line you want to detach, it just pulls off. And this is the overflow side. So yeah, we have this line right here, these two lines, and then that big bottom line over there, and you'll be free. So let's get this thing draining. Okay, you can see the difference. Man, we should be able to see the coolant level easily now. So we're gonna switch over this line to here. And they already give you a uh, coolant level sensor. Those are expensive too. They were, I think I paid like 60 bucks for mine. So I'm definitely gonna keep my other one. But that's cool that they already give you one because this whole thing was only 97 bucks. So that had to be part of the price right there. All right, so new cap comes here. Those just pull off and then transfer over this uh, bracket here and we'll put it back on well, let's get to that compressor now now for removing this bracket right here make sure you have a hex set about that size and they are hard to get in and out I mean they've gotten heating up so many times that uh, I barely got it but I didn't have much leverage <laughs> all right so put that back on and it we'll is put definitely it back in. sloppy you're gonna lose a little bit of coolant but I plugged that up with the towel, but it's still dripping slowly. So we're gonna get this back on there so it doesn't drip too much. But yeah, there she's missing. And there she's not. All right, let's get it in. Okay, and we're back in. So I actually took this off to get this in because it had too much push on it. Um, and make sure you don't tighten all of these until you get them all in because you gotta kind of adjust it and then uh, tighten them down. And then make sure you remember to replug up your uh, level sensor and tighten up your clamps on all these. Just gotta tighten this one. And then reconnect your lines up there. Reconnect your reservoir cap or your overflow cap and put a new radiator cap on. Let's do it. I don't know if you guys can hear all those horns honking in the background, but it's been going on now for a while. And uh, I don't know, someone's having a rally or something. You hear all that? <laughs> Lots of horns. We're gonna clean up all this and clean up on these connectors just so, or these uh, lines, just so we know that if that problem's fixed, uh, we're good to go. And he's just pressed right back in, get him in there and then get those clamps back on top. There has to be a parade or something going on because they're still honking their horns. Okay, so I cleaned it up pretty good. This stuff is, uh, you gotta use, use your fingernail to get this stuff off. And with these, be very careful. Um, when you think you've pushed it in far enough, you probably haven't. It has to be all the way seated in there for this clip to go in that groove right there and clip like that. It shouldn't move side to side. See this one actually, there's only one place it can go. So this one's on the bottom, but it has to, these little things have to be on the back side of this ridge, this lip, and they have to be in that first groove. So make sure you get it there. If it's just popping out and you just clip it on there, it'll clip, but this won't be behind this and it can pop back out and you could be on a 6% grade up in Tennessee, just dumping coolant and not even know it. So. Make sure these are locked in good. All right. Okay, so I got this loose now. And uh, what you're gonna do down here is only this back one, one on the top and one on the bottom. Don't worry about all these. You're gonna open up your power steering. So just the two, top, whoop, that out of the way. Top one, 
bottom one you can't see, and they're uh, 16 millimeter. And then this down here is the other one you gotta get off, that and those two. So after you get the top one and the bottom one off, your power steering will just kind of shake it, jimmy it, it'll come off. And that's your whole power steering pump right there. And this is all the rundown from the other one. Let it kind of sit down to the bottom. You're gonna be leaking some oil out of the back of the compressor now. It's just gonna happen. That's why the cover's on the other one, keep it on there. And now we're gonna get these two, those two off. And then it's just the two in the front and this airline and we'll be free. Oh yeah, and the coolant ones. So once you get these out, these are all 13 millimeter and uh, this will just pop out, see? That's just the back support for it. Um, and what I forgot to tell you guys, I'm gonna get this airline off next and then the two front bolts. Uh, do all that first, get everything free, because that will give you some leeway to tilt this towards you so you can get to these coolant lines up here a little easier, unless you want to take off your whole intake. You take off your whole intake right here, this will be a cake work, cake job, but uh, we're going to try and do it without since we've done it twice before. We're going to make sure we keep those uh, coolant lines under. So use an 18 open end, closed inside, and that's how you're going to get to this uh, top one that's going to release it. So. That's what you need, 18. Open. Okay, now you see a little black cover right there? That is how you would manually crank your motor. Those two bolts below it, the top one is the bottom one or the bottom for the compressor. So loosen that one, you're gonna need a 14, uh, 15 millimeter. So loosen that one right there. So we started this whole thing at uh, two o'clock. It's now three o'clock and the honking has just stopped. To give you better access, this just pops off. It's a, uh, the crankcase, um, what's it called, a filter? Yeah, crankcase filter. Um, just pull it out, put it to the side, and that'll give you way better access to these two lines. Because you need this one off and this one off. And since we just drained our coolant, we should be good. But yeah, be careful with them. This one is not as braided. They're both braided. Do not kink these. That's a problem I had with my truck when I first got it. It was already kinked. And I didn't know it. So it was starving the compressor's head because it has coolant going through the coolant. It was starving it for coolant. And that could have been a reason that my end frame came sooner than later because it might have been starving for coolant going back into the back of the block. So who knows? But we're free now. All we need to do is take off these coolant lines and she'll come out. All right. You pull for the last time. Make sure you know the position of these because that's their, you can't, you can adjust them a little bit when they're in there, but try and have them set at that pretty close to be tightened down before you get the compressor back in there. So pay attention to where those are pointing. All right. One's pointing straight back towards the starter, one's pointing straight towards you. Okay, so there you go. So you can even just kind of pay attention right here and just track them right over to each other, to the other side. Switch them over. Um, this is just a, a flimsy hose, just switch that over. This is already loose, put that back on there, and then reinstall. Let's do it. One more thing, these are uh, 24, both the nuts that go to the lines and the uh, one's down here, so you need a 24 open in to get to those there you go okay so now have it all switched over and get your gasket in it in the spot too use a little petroleum jelly make it stick against it that's a little trick so it doesn't move on you and get it back in there lined up okay now when you're getting this back in make sure you don't drop this nut first of all it's, it's not tight yet and this is a washer I heard something fall and took it off and I was like well, what was that and I forgot it's a really thick washer so when you take this off pull that off too and keep them both safe when you put them back on but we're getting back there she's in tightened down uh coolant lines are tightened up in the right position we just got to tighten everything else up and uh get these off get the cover off and put the power steering back on tighten it down when i was telling you earlier you need a big boy crescent i mean that's a big boy crescent but you don't need that big just like pretty big crescent because this going to your intake right here this one um is a big big nut so and also when i did my m frame after having that compressor on there for a while getting hot i don't know if that had contributed to it but it was stuck could not get it off so at hey guy they actually air chiseled on it so you could probably sit there and hit it with a hammer for a little bit gently on each side and to break it loose but uh, it was pretty dang stuck so that one is what you need the big crescent for we are almost all the way wrapped up just have the uh power steering and we'll be ready to fire i was pulling these gaskets out to get the front one on to the block. I was thinking to myself, I can't believe they didn't give me a, a gasket for the power steering pump. I'll have to go buy one because the other one got torn a little bit. And they do, it, it's already on there right now. You can't see it, but it's really thin. It comes, uh, when that cover comes off, it's already on there. So you're good to go. All right, power steering. All right, last thing is the governor line. 
just plastic, carbonate, and first compressor I ever had only had the one outlet for the governor. Second compressor I bought, I only replaced and put back up into this one. Fired it, started going, and when it started hitting a certain PSI, pss, huge air leak, I was like, what is going on? For multiple applications, they make two of them. So that back one, I had to go to the hardware store and just buy a plug. Plug that one off and just use the front one. They both do the same thing, but it's for different applications if it's going in from a different area. So I'm gonna plug this one off and hook it back into here. So we have our old coolant here that we saved. And I had to retrofit that little filter in there because uh, it wouldn't, I was either gonna have to put the filter right on top of that and then I'd be leaking coolant everywhere. So, and my buddy Eric just stopped by. What's going on, Eric? He's thinking about getting his uh, authority and all that stuff too, so. I had to talk to him a little bit. Let's get this coolant back in here. All right, I grabbed a couple more gallons because I knew I'd lose some, but we almost got back up high. Look how much easier it is to see the coolant level now. Yes, and it worked. We caught some stuff. So, uh, all right, let's fill her up and then we get to fire it and then we get home to Truck and Wife because she made some tacos. Speaking of Truck and Wife, while I fill this back up, here is the giveaway, guys. November 21st, and new CB radio. Here she is. For the giveaway this month, we're going to be doing it just a little bit differently than we normally do. We're going to be giving away a Connex or a Stryker CB radio. Justin will insert the pictures here. So you get to pick between one or the other and let us know which one you'd like. But here's the difference of how we're going to do the giveaway this month. We're going to ask that you be in the chat room during the live. You have to be in there to win the prize. The link will be in the description. You click sign up. And then on November 21st, when we choose the winners, we're going to choose a list. And we'll start at number one. And the winner that is number one will say your name, send you an email, and you have a couple seconds to get back to us. If you don't get back to us and you're not in the chat, we go to the next one and so on and so forth until we get a winner, which we're really excited about. I know it's a little bit different, but we like to switch it up. Uh, thank you guys so much for all your support. If you haven't clicked that like or subscribe button, please do that. We appreciate you so much and God bless. Good luck. Well, thanks, Drug and Wife, for telling us about the giveaway. Now, I only took one gallon and we're back to minimum level, so... We have another gallon because now we're going to start the truck. Always start your truck afterwards, get all the air pockets out because we took out the compressor. That leaves a little bit of coolant missing over there. So, um, eh, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please see, like, and subscribe. Um, share a video if you've already subscribed. And uh, we appreciate every one of you. And I hope this helps somebody instead of sitting at a TA Petro or any repair shop across America, do yourself in two and a half hours. Reservoir and your compressor. So. Let's fire it up, and then we'll add the last bit of coolant. Get here. Bro. Well, that thing's awesome. Now we're just waiting for the thermostat to open up. Once the thermostat opens, it'll start to take the coolant into the whole system, and then we'll know how much more we gotta add. We're all buttoned up. Nothing's leaking. Reservoir is back as much coolant so we're gonna add a little bit more probably another half gallon get it up to the min mic uh, right before the max mark right in the middle probably and then we'll run it tomorrow when we deliver this and then check it again but yeah that is a coolant reservoir and a compressor for re re removal and replacement in about two and a half hours so just take your time with it go through those steps and it's not that hard guys keeps you out of those uh truck stop repair shops man all right, God bless everybody. Thanks for watching the channel. Thanks for subscribing. Have a beautiful rest of your Sunday, and we'll see you this week.